There is you Darvish swing and a miss. You Darvish. Talk about the absolute spot on. Couldn't have gone any better for him. And a swing and a miss. Arietta with a strikeout. He strands a pair. Boy, what a job by Jake Arietta, giving the Cubs everything that they needed tonight. Hosmer. Martinez show. J.D. Martinez homers in four consecutive plate appearances. And that's it. Holland strikes out Perez in this remade Rockies bullpen is the real deal. What a job by Holland. Hey everyone, welcome to 1225 Live. My name is Alexa Dad. We've got an amazing Friday show for you today. We've got the Padres outfielder Matt Caesar joining us in just a little bit. We're going to talk to him about an incredible story where he saved the life of a young girl. Plus, we'll talk a little baseball. What's it like playing in a dominant NL West? And he spent some time in Chicago, so which pizza style does he prefer, New York's or Chicago's? He will answer that a little bit later here on 1225 Live. Plus, Anthony Kasherin stops by. He is our free agent wizard. And with Jay Bruce reuniting with the Mets, do we see some other reunions in our future? He will look in his crystal ball and do some predictions for us. But we start the show with Danny Wexman, our social savant. And Danny, I got a question for you. I need you to settle an argument for me, okay? I got an answer for you. Okay, how long is too long to keep your Christmas tree up? If your tree is still up, it's too long. No, why? Yes, the tree is done. Listen, your tree <laughs> is from 2017, and we're moving into 2018. So you got to say goodbye to your tree and hello to 2018. Oh, bummer. That's yeah, all I got. My tree is still up. My husband's giving me slight jabs here and there about taking it down, but it's just so pretty. I love it. I'm Team Peter. But listen, the real, the real question we need to answer is when do you stop saying Happy New Year or Happy Belated New Year? Okay, you cannot say Happy Belated New Year. That doesn't even exist. <laughs> okay. Um, you stop saying Happy New Year, I think, at the end of January. That's when it expires. That's okay. the expiration date. You get a January month. January 31st. You get a whole month. Okay. And especially, you know, when you see people for the first time, that's really what it's all about. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yes. After the first time, you obviously can't say it again. But then after January, then you should stop saying it. Okay. I'm glad we settled that. We're, in this, we're on the same page. Same page. Yes. All right. Uh, Jay Bruce returns to the Mets. And we've heard a story about another big star wanting to return to Queens, Danny. That is correct. So, our our friend 50 Cent, if you do remember his atrocious first pitch back yeah. in 2014, we're going to bring this back for you so you guys can remember this. He's actually been training because he would also like to make his return to the pitching mound. And during a recent interview, he said, they have baseball cards with me throwing the pitch, real baseball cards that they made, he said. I go, wait a minute, who cleared this? Whenever baseball comes up, there's no one worse than me as far as throwing out a pitch. Yeah, this is amazing. He claimed that he was just too, you know, trying too hard and it was too fancy <laughs> during his first go around. So the Mets are like, hey, do you want to come and totally redeem yourself? Here's your invitation. Come out of, come throw a first pitch this season and toss a strike this time, buddy. So what happens if he doesn't toss a strike? <laughs> then what? He's banned for life. Is well, that the rule? Then he continues to live on the internet uh, forever with two terrible first pitches. That's just what he's got to deal with, man. You carry the baggage around with you forever. Everyone deserves a mulligan, so 50 Cent, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, man, that you do a better job. Just get, like, in the realm. Just eat close. You don't yeah. even have to get it over the plate. Just don't try close. too hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's good not advice. that difficult. No, not and don't hit my cameraman, too. That was my cameraman, Christian, who was out there. And I remember him coming back, like, man, that ball came at me, and I had no idea that it was coming. So hopefully we get him to totally redeem himself. In epic fashion. Epic fashion. And at least get it across the plate. That's all we're saying. That's all we're asking for. So this is an incredible photo, by the way. Someone snapped this. You can kind of see where everything went wrong. But this is actually one of my favorite photos because this moment was so iconic. And that leads us to our question of the day. Because yesterday on MLB's Twitter, we asked, what is your favorite baseball photo? They got over a thousand different responses, not only from teams, but obviously all the fans, all of you guys out there on Twitter and social media. So what we want to know today on our show, 1225 Live, is what's your favorite baseball photo? What's your favorite, most iconic moment that's been captured in time forever? There are so many different moments that you could choose. So get specific. Let us know. Maybe you were at the game. Maybe you have the photo hanging in your apartment, your house, wherever, something that you treasure. If you're not on Facebook, head over now. Let us know. We're going to read those 
a little bit later in the show. All right, I've got a pretty good one too from baseball history that we'll share a little bit later along with all of those responses. Thanks, Perfect. Danny. You're welcome. All right, time for us to welcome in our very special guest right here to the show. Padres outfielder Matt Caesar is joining us right now. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Good. How are you doing today? Good. You know, I'm preparing for this interview and I'm watching your incredible E60 story. You have had such a, an amazing journey in your life. You, know, you grew up in Cape May, New Jersey. You are a two sport athlete, not only in high school, but also in college in Villanova playing both football and baseball. Which sport did you gravitate to the most and which one stood out to you? Uh, to be honest with you, I think uh, football really kind of gravitated towards me. You know, I, I went to school to, to be a football player. And, uh, you know, baseball was always secondary to me. I always did, uh, um, you know, baseball in the summertime, but it was majority football. And uh, once I played football, I, you know, fell in love with it and continued to play and was able to have a pretty good career baseball-wise at Villanova and, and yeah. uh, had, had an opportunity to play both. So, you know, ended up choosing uh, baseball. <laughs> Well, and that's what's so incredible because you won the FCS National Championship your junior year at Villanova. You were the most outstanding player. You scored two touchdowns. What an amazing game for you there. Uh, how does that compare to anything else you've ever accomplished in your career? Uh, it's definitely up there. Um, you know, win the World Series was, was pretty cool, too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, donating Bo Mauer was probably the, the best thing I've ever done. All right, so let's talk about spring of that year. You know, you're playing baseball, and it's just a month before the draft, and you get a call that the cheek swab that you had done is a match for somebody who needs a bone marrow transplant, and you were uh, willing to go ahead and donate your bone marrow to a young girl. You didn't know who it was, but you went through the process anyway, and you ended up learning a year later. It was a young girl from Ukraine named Anastasia. I was listening to this story. I mean, I was in tears, man. This was so incredible, the fact that you've gotten to know her now what has this experience been like for you uh, I mean it's been a great experience and anybody that can uh, can do that and uh, you know go to be the match and, and do a cheek swab you know and have an opportunity to save a life should do it um, you know but for me it was it was awesome you know uh, finding out that she was alive and she was uh, she was doing great was probably the best feeling I've ever had and um, it was just it was just great to do and and you know I, I have friends all over the country you know from that Villanova football team that are continuing to do so as well was there any ever a question in your mind once you got the call there? I know you were kind of in the middle of your football season as well that you ever were going to go through with this procedure? Uh, no, there was no question. You know, I was doing a hundred percent. You know, I knew she was a little eighteen month old, you know, little girl, and um, you know, I just knew that if I was in their their parent situation, that I'd want somebody out there to get to lend a hand and give some help. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. By the way, Seize the, uh, Seize the Day Foundation has been created by Matt, and you can go check it out, com for more information there. And I know a lot of people are wearing their Seize the Day shirts that they've purchased on the website. There you go. There is the shirt. I love that. Matt, you're going to send a couple to us here on the show so we can wear them as well. Sure. We would absolutely love to rock those. You're also an incredible artist. I mean, the list goes on and on, man. Is there anything that you can't do? So we want to show some of your, uh, your artwork here on the show you've done a couple of paintings and you also auction them off or sell them for charity as well tell me though why the shoes why did you decide to go <laughs> with the Christian Louboutins oh man you know my wife wanted me to, to I bought them those are her first uh, Louboutins for Christmas and she wanted me to, to do a design for it so uh, I threw some some things together ended up doing a design for her. we're gonna hang them on our wall and serve her first pair of shoes or her first pair of lubes I love that where did you learn to 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 paint like this so uh growing up i've always been interested in, in painting art and drawing and sketching and uh you know i've always my dad was big into it so i'd always sit by his chair and watch him you know carve or do whatever and last year we were thinking about ideas for the our foundation dinner uh how to raise money so uh i did a couple you know self portraits of me playing football and baseball and it kind of it grew pretty big and uh the cubs wanted me to do one of the world series so you know, I did one for, for the Cubs and we raised, I think it was $35,000 for their uh, their annual charity event. And I uh, did one for the Padres, raised a lot of money for the Padres, and I just continue to do it. You know, it's, it's very therapeutic for me. Yeah, that's awesome. It's a great creative outlet. And I love the last out there between Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo. By the way, speaking of Anthony Rizzo, you lent him your bat during that epic World Series run. You lend Addison Russell your underwear. Man, you're like the low-key MVP <laughs> of that team, my man. Do you have anything left? You've been giving it all the way to teammates. 
Well, you know, what's really great about that is um, when that second E60 aired, it aired that day when I gave those guys like the bat and uh, the leggings and, you know, they both went off. So it was, it was pretty cool. It was, uh, it definitely put chills on your spine. That's for sure. All right. Now you are a member of this Padres team. What's it like playing in a very dominant and competitive NL West where three of the five teams made the playoffs this past year? Yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's tough, but, you know, you're in the major league, so any any team you're going to play is tough. But it's fun. It's competitive. You know, guys are out there trying to win, and, and that's the kind of game you want to be a part of. You know, you want to be a part of uh, playing against the best pitchers every day. And, and you know, you get, you know, Clayton Kershaw, you Darvish, um, you get all those guys. And, you know, it's, it's fun to compete against teams like that and play in big areas, too. Yeah, and the good news for you is that in your career against two of the top pitchers in the division, Madison Bumgarner and Clayton Kershaw, we did the math and added it up. You're 318 with two home runs. What does that mean to you? Uh, yeah, that's that's just part of the game. You know, I, I love uh, going out there for a challenge and, and facing these guys. Uh, you know, it gets gets everybody going, you know, knowing you, you, you're facing the best pitchers in the game. You got a chance to beat them. Do you give any of your tips to succeed against these top guys to anyone else on your team? Uh, you know, I feel like you go up against these guys and everybody thinks you're going to strike out anyway, so you really got nothing to lose and, and you know, you go out there and have fun. That's a great attitude. Yeah, I love that. So that's a, maybe not so much a secret, but a great tip that you can pass along. <laughs> All right, Matt, it's time for us to play a game of questions. We're going to welcome in Danny Wexman here, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to ask you rapid-fire questions, and you're going to give us an answer. We're actually all going to answer these questions in about one or two words. Sound good? Okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. Game of questions. Who was your favorite baseball player growing up? Ken Griffey Jr. Ozzie Smith. Cal Ripken Jr. Matt, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? Uh, Italy. Australia. South Africa for a safari. Ooh, nice. What's the craziest way somebody's pronounced your last name? <sighs> Skizger. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that tops me. I'm only Waxelman. Yeah, date. <laughs> Pretty bad. Uh, Matt, what's the best mascot? A wildcat, a cub, or a padre? Uh, I'm going to say a wildcat. 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 Yeah, absolutely. All right, Chicago style pizza or New York style pizza? Uh, my uncle Steve owns a restaurant, owns a pizza place, so I'm going to say uh, Wildwood, New Jersey style pizza. Nice. Love that. I'm going to go with uh, St. Louis style, but New York since I live here. Yeah, I'm going deep dish, Chicago style. All right, Matt, East Coast or West Coast? Hmm. East Coast. East Coast. East Coast. That's right. Give me a famous artist you would want to paint a portrait of you. Um, Van Gogh. Andy Warhol. Matt Caesar. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, if you could speak a foreign language, what would it be? Uh, I'd probably be Spanish so I could understand all my players. There you go. Ukrainian. I'm Ukrainian. Oh, that's good. I'm going to go with speaking better Spanish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Favorite moment of your baseball career? Uh, Win the World Series. Yeah. I'm going to say mine hasn't happened yet. Being on the field <laughs> with the Mets during the World Series, even though I'm not a baseball player, still part of my career. Great memory. All right, Matt, who wins the World Series in 2018? Mm. San Diego Padres. <laughs> I like it, and nice. I'm going to go with uh, the Astros back-to-back. -back. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Nationals. All right, uh, final question here, Matt. Who wins the Super Bowl this year? Uh, hopefully the Eagles. Ooh, okay. Well, that's an interesting answer because we've got you rocking Eagles gear. We know you're from New Jersey, but you've also put on a Patriots shirt before, Matt. So we're calling <laughs> oh, you out sure. right here on 1225 that's Live. Right. Man, are you going against the Eagles? Or are you going for the Patriots? What's your deal here? See, it's tough because, you know, I've, I've been hometown Eagles my whole life, but I have, uh, and, and Westbrook went to Villanova, but I have really, really two good buddies. Uh, one good buddy is a special teams coach with the Patriots, so I'm, I'm a big fan of both. Yeah, fair enough. Fair you got to pick the Eagles, I guess. You got to go hometown. I hear you. That's for sure. <laughs> Yep. All right, Matt, uh, your annual Seize the Day event is just a couple of weeks away. I know you and your wife are very excited about that. You can check out all the info on Matt's Twitter, Super Seize 4. That's Super S-Z-C-Z 4. You can also go to SeizeTheDay.com slash shop to get your Seize the Day t-shirt, just like Matt's wearing, and donate to the foundation to help those battling bone cancer. Matt, 
Enjoy your event. Enjoy this season. And thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Take care. All right, Danny, uh, earlier this offseason, we were talking a little bit about uh, Tony, uh, excuse me, Francisco Lindor and uh, what his coach had to say about what he was participating in this offseason. That's right. He's doing a couple crazy things for offseason training, a little bit outside the box. And the guys on Hot Stove got to talk to Terry Francona and got his hot take. Check this out. So uh, this is the photo of Francisco Lindor. And do you, do you know what he's doing? Can you tell? Well, karate, I believe. That's right. Yeah, uh, how does uh, Terry feel about that? Tito? There are some things that I would imagine would make a manager and a front office executive a little nervous in terms of off-season pursuit. Yeah, uh, what we're alluding to is uh, Francisco Lindor taking up karate in Japan. Uh, have you seen the video of this? <laughs> Yeah, I have. I have. I thought you were going to actually give me something else. I can think of more stuff than that. As long as he doesn't get his ass beat, we're going to be okay. I mean, you know, he's. I, my guess is he's going to come to camp and be as limber and as strong as he's ever been, and nobody's going to want to fight him. Not that you would want to anyway, but I give him credit. I. I I've heard of a lot worse things that guys do. This is not something that was real high on the worry poll. I actually really like that answer, and that's the exact same thing I would say. He's going to be limber, so let him do all the karate he wants. Why not? We know uh, Felix Hernandez, I believe, was doing some hot yoga <laughs> to help with his back and his uh, his being more uh, nimble. So whatever right. works, right? Yeah, absolutely. I like it. All right, uh, Danny, we also had something that caught our eye on social last night from Kyle Schwarber. That's right. So check out this tweet, and then we're going to explain what exactly is going on. So okay. I was I was curious about what was happening here. So basically, Kyle Schwarber had some kind of ad. He said, spring training here is here. I want to thank my friends at Ship yourcarnow.com for shipping my Jeep wherever I need. You can hear the jingle in your head, can't you? Need to ship yours? Tell them Schwarb sent you. And then he gives this uh, great link and, and hashtag ad. So we decided that we wanted to come up with some other funny advertisements for players in baseball. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> I came up with this one. I know it's your favorite, Lex, your favorite. Josh Reddick Speedo Shop for the everyman. 15% off if you use the code America. Oh, I absolutely love this. And we could turn this into a jingle, too. And uh, the video to accompany it and <laughs> dance around in that speedo would be awesome. You can see the commercial right now, right? Yeah. Yes. How about a Trevor Williams audio shop? 10% <laughs> off? With the code, in my humble opinion. That's right. So Trevor Williams has a podcast uh, with another one of his teammates. And that's what the podcast is called, IMHO. And uh, they were just on MLB Network the other day talking about it. And it sounded like they had some audio issues, in fact. So if you guys need some audio help, maybe, you know, someone in New York can help you out with that. Yeah, Danny, you could probably help them out. I can help them out. Great job producing podcasts. I put out, uh, I put out a, a call to action on Twitter. If you guys need any help, let me yeah. know. Yeah. Danny is the, the person to call for sure, so get on the horn. Do all right. it. <laughs> Question of the day, we're asking people their favorite baseball photos of all time. That's right. We have some really good answers. So if you're not on Facebook, you can go over now and answer what's your favorite photo, favorite memory that's, that's uh, happened in baseball. So Tim said, my favorite baseball photo is the one of Ron Santo kicking his heels while he runs off the field at Wrigley. Tim, we love you. Um, we're going to show some of these photos, by the way, at the end of the show, so you guys can see exactly what we're talking about. Bruce Hank Aaron's number 715, by the way, that was back in 1974. And Vin Scully had that call of Hank Aaron's home run number 715. Carter, David Freeze walk off home run right before he gets mobbed, throwing his helmet between his legs. Carter, you're my man. I love, I love that one. I love and that then too. Brian said Correa celebrating game five walk off. Yeah, of course, pretty incredible. Classic. I still have one though, I think that beats all of those. Yeah. I'll share it a little bit later on in the show. All right, that's great. All right, thanks, Eddie. You're welcome. Time for us to talk a little baseball as we welcome in our national correspondent, Anthony Castro. And Castro, in the wake of the Go. Jay Bruce back to the Mets deal, let's talk about some other reunion that we could possibly see around the league. Uh, let's start with Eduardo Nunez back in pinstripes. Do you think he would fit well back with the Yankees? I think he'd fit extremely well. Uh, you know, probably a better fit now than he was, uh, you know, five years ago or whenever it was when he was last in pinstripes. Uh, he's carved out a nice little career for himself in the time since. You remember uh, when he was with the Yankees, you know, he was always billed as Derek Jeter's heir apparent, and, and obviously that did not work out too well. He has defensive issues and offensive issues, but... 
you know, goes on to have a nice utility career, then kind of established himself as, as more of an everyday guy and uh, had a big impact in Boston uh, when he arrived there last summer. He's a little more injury prone than you might like, but I just think for that Yankees team with um, a lot of youth in that infield in general, uh, he, he makes a lot of sense right now. So that's a reunion you could potentially see. All right, let's talk about the other team in New York, the Mets. Are they done with Jay Bruce, or could you possibly see Neil Walker return to Queens? Well, you don't assume they're going to spend, you know, a tremendous amount of money here moving forward. But um, obviously, Walker would fill a need for them. There's no question about it. Um, and, and how they fill their infield remains to be seen. They, they could just as easily fill third base and move as Drupal Cabrera over to second base. But um, obviously, Walker was a productive player for them in the past and um, traded him to Milwaukee late last season. He was very productive for them down the stretch. And he's, he could still fill a need with the Brewers. Uh, they still have a hole at second base. So I, I would say either of those two clubs makes a lot of sense. But, um, but yeah, a, re a reunion with the Mets, uh, you know, is it, something you could see here in the, in the hopper here because they still need more offense, you know, they, and they still just need more stability in that infield in general. Yeah, and they love their reunions with their former players, uh, the fan base. I'm sure it's lukewarm about it, but it is nice to see a familiar face in that clubhouse sometimes. Cubs are on the market for a starter. What's the chance uh, Andrew Kashner comes back with the Cubbies? Yeah, I, I think they're they're definitely delving into more of the deep pool uh, right now. And, and by that, I mean you, Darvish. Uh, there's still a potential for a Jake Arrieta reunion. But I'm just throwing this out there as a guy who, you know, if they don't want to totally break the bank, uh, the Cubbies, because let's face it, those long-term contracts that we're talking about with an Arietta or a Darvish, uh, this team's going to have to spend a lot of money to keep its young position player core together down the road. So um, Kashner's coming off a really strong season in Texas and uh, you know, much different guy than way back when, when he was a, a Cubs first round draft pick. And then, of course, uh, trade bait in the Anthony Rizzo deal. So, um, so yeah, he, he's an interesting guy in this marketplace because obviously the starting market has not moved an inch uh, this hot stove season. Um, so he, like everybody else, is playing the waiting game, but he could be a good value play for the Cubs or really any club coming off the year he had. It's pretty incredible that bullpenning was part of the season and now it's part of the offseason too, right, Castro? It's, it's just a, right. it's, it's amazing how this has all worked out. Brewers are also looking for a starter, but in terms of a reunion with a former player, would Lorenzo Cain in the outfield make sense for this? Well, this is something they, they've kept tabs on his market, um, but this is something that would obviously it would require uh, more than just signing Lorenzo Cain. They'd have to move some guys out. Uh, they, they have a, a full outfield right now. Um, so be it Kean Broxton or Domingo Santana uh, or maybe both of those guys. I mean, they have to trade those guys presumably for pitching. Right. And, and pitching is generally more expensive right now than position player helps. So there could be an argument for moving those guys for pitching um, and, uh, you know, perhaps signing Lorenzo Cain. But um, this one might be a little more on the unlikely side overall. But, you know, Cain's marketplace is interesting. This is a really impact player. And, uh, you know, there, there's not a tremendous amount of, of teams in on him that we know about right now. So and obviously he, like everybody else, you know, his market has really dragged on. So. Um, so obviously the Brewers uh, traded Lorenzo Cain as part of the Zach Greinke deal way back when, and um, there's a conceivable fit now, but again, it, it would take some, uh, some other moving parts. All right, back to starters. You Darvish is the best free agent starter on the market. Is he going to play for his third team or possibly go back to where it all started with the Rangers? Well, my hunch is he'll end up with his third team just because I think where the price tag will end up. But um, the Rangers are, are still in on you. And we know uh, it was reported the other night that the five teams that are, are kind of finalists here. And then you Darvish quickly corrected everybody and said, actually, there's a sixth team involved. But uh, but the Rangers were one of the five, of course. And, you know, the relationship there is so strong. Uh, it, it was a great environment for him to transition to the United States and a really comfortable place for him, which is no small thing. Uh, but if it comes down to every last dollar, which, of course, you know, it's that's been known to happen in free agency. I don't know if Texas is going to win any bidding wars this winter. They don't seem inclined to, to go that route. Um, so we mentioned Andrew Kashner earlier. I mean, going back to Texas could be an option for him uh, or maybe some other lower price free agents. But again, the, the comfortability factor there, nobody knows Texas as well as you, Darvish. So um, so it's still a, uh, still a possibility here this late stage of the game. All right, the arbitration deadline is today at 1 o'clock. That's coming up in about 11 or 12 minutes here. Anything stood out to you so far? <laughs> yeah, Josh Donaldson getting $23 million. That, yeah. That'll jump out at you. Um, that, would, that was even beyond, I mean, the, um, the expected. What we expected was that he would break the record anyway, uh, and then he, he blew past it. So, uh, so good for Josh Donaldson. It's great. Uh, he had the two-year contract within that, but you know he had basically four years of arbitration eligibility 
and you know you mix an MVP into that and, and you have you know the kind of production this guy has had and these are the kind of numbers you can get to and we're getting to the point and not necessarily Josh Donaldson but we, in some cases I mean some guys are more valuable in arbitration than they are in free agency and I'd be curious if Donaldson was a free agent right now what would that market look like just because again the way the position player market has moved or I should say not moved this winter so uh, so he did very well for himself in arbitration he'll be a free agent a year from now and um, you know that's a it's just a monster deal for a guy who he missed some time last year and he started out slow but uh, it, it was easy to overlook that he was one of the best players in baseball the last couple months of the season all right Castro unlike the hot stove we're gonna speed things up here we're gonna play faster Vince with Castro Vince I'm going to give you a couple of questions, and you just give me a, a fast, rapid answer for what you think is possible. Let's start off with, right. does J.D. Martinez sign with the Red Sox? I say yes. It just makes too much sense. Will Manny Machado finish 2018 with the Orioles? I say no way. Um, they'd have to be surprise contenders. I, I just don't see it. Where do the Giants go now that Jay Bruce is with the Mets? Uh, I mean, Lorenzo Cain's the perfect fit there, but they don't want to give up a draft pick, so it might be a, a lower tier option. Maybe even, you know, Carlos Gomez, Austin Jackson, uh, Gerard Dyson. I mean, they need somebody who can play good defense out there and provide some production as well. When will Garrett Cole be moved this offseason? I'm going to say no later than Tuesday. How about that? <laughs> Sounds good. True or yeah, false? It's going to happen. <laughs> True or false, Christian Yelich, Real Muto, and Starlin Castro are part of the Marlins opening day lineup this year. I'll go falling towards false. Um, obviously, it's going to take a dynamic package to get Yelich to Real Muto. Um, and, and Castro, there's not a huge market for second baseman, so he might not get his wish of, of getting moved out of there. But obviously, when a player indicates a willingness to move, sometimes that uh, you know moves the needle a bit. We'll see. All right, and last but not least, where does Greg Holland sign this offseason? I'm going to go with the Nationals. Uh, the Scott Boris relationship, of course, is strong there with ownership there. And, um, you know, they, they could really build a, a super bullpen with Greg Holland. And this is a very much a win now uh, environment in Washington. Yeah, man. Set up men were their problem last year. That would not be the case this year if they uh, were to accomplish that signing. All right. We got yeah. a question from our social savants, Danny. What's up, Castro? Well, are you Danny or Alexa? I'm confused after <laughs> yesterday's uh, Twitter post from Alexa. I knew so. you would say something about that man. He comments, <laughs> and I was like, man, he's going to bring that up today on the show. What a yeah. moment, right? It was a long that day. It was a great moment. It was a long day. Yeah. <laughs> it was a long day. It was, yeah. We were grinding through it. But, uh, you know, it's fine. Either way, either way, I'm okay with that. We're, there's a lot of Bruce things happening right now, by the way. We're about to talk about Jay Bruce. You got a lot of Bruce in your background. And our friend Bruce. That's right. Our friend Just Bruce. Go ahead. And you can stand in front of it. That's fine. <laughs> Cover those. Our friend Bruce on Facebook wants to know, with Jay Bruce going to the Mets, how is the yeah. outfield situation for the Indians? Well, this was not a, a big surprise when once they picked up Michael Brantley's option, Jay Bruce wasn't they weren't really in the Jay Bruce market, quite frankly, because when they acquired Jay Bruce, the whole thought there was, you know, Brantley and Chisholm were both hurt at that time. And uh, that left handed bat, you know, slid in perfect in their lineup, whereas now they're looking for right handed help. So um, where that leads, I don't know. I mean, they, they signed Melvin Upton Jr. to a minor league deal, but. I mean, your outfield right now is, if, once Michael Brantley is healthy, is Michael Brantley in left field, Bradley Zimmer in center, Lonnie Chisholm Hall in right, and, and maybe Melvin Upton is, is in the mix here this season. We'll see. But um, they don't have the, the finances, quite frankly, to go out and do anything really big and bold. And I guess even Jay Bruce's contract would qualify. They're, they're still open to the idea of moving Jason Kipnis to free up that money, and that would uh, give them the option of doing some other things. But you look around, there's a lot of outfielders out there, so the market could come down to them. All right. Thanks, Danny. I mean, Anthony. <laughs> we'll see <laughs> you later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it, Castro. <laughs> Take care. See you guys. All right, uh, Danny, our question of the day. People are talking about the best baseball photos of all time. They are. They are. Very quickly before we get to that, though, we just had a fan on Facebook, Judy, who said she just ordered a T-shirt. Thanks, Matt. So yes. I am thinking that, Judy, you went to seize the day and bought a T-shirt to support uh, Matt and all of the incredible things that he's doing outside of the baseball world. So if you want to also support Matt, you can go to seize the day. It's S-Z-C-Z. -Z 
theday.com and do just like Judy did and buy a shirt and help support an incredible cause. Excellent. So. Yeah, we're going to get a couple of those and wear them on the show so we can be twinning with Judy. That's right. Shout out to Judy. All right, so our question of the day, we want to know what's your favorite baseball photo? There are a, a million and one answers for this. Alexa, you're going to talk about yours in a quick second. Actually, you're going to talk about yours first. Okay. Uh, tell us again what your favorite baseball photo is. I know you guys have waited all show for this, so yes. I won't tease you any longer. It's Bo Jackson breaking the bat over his head. This is one of the most iconic moments in baseball history because of the ease with which he did this. It was like a toothpick, not a real bat. And in mid-moment of it cracking, I thought this was one of the most iconic photos to me. It really stood out. This is a great framer. I'd frame this photo for, for sure. sure. Uh, next good framer, we've got Adam Jones of the WBC. Yeah. Look at this monster catch. He is wingspan out making that incredible grab in front of all the hometown fans there. And the best part was this photo was in HD so we could zoom in on all the people's reactions which were pretty epic, too. They were. They were. We took a look at all their faces. All right, next, we have from Alan on Facebook, Jeffrey Myers catch in 1996, O's vs. Yanks. Let's take a look at this photo. Yeah, when Mayer made this catch, it was pretty iconic. I remember I was in sixth grade, and this was such a huge moment for me as an O's fan. Uh, and just watching everyone freak out when he made this catch, I love that it was... Ca captured in a freeze frame there for us to all see. Speaking of freeze frames, Carter on Facebook, David Freeze, right before heading home, threw that helmet between his legs. Game six, walk off in 2011. No, one, no one could forget this. You'll moment. never forget that, I'll right? Never Danny? forget it. It gives me chills every time, every yeah. time. And then our friend Bruce, again, Bruce, you've been hanging out with us all day on Facebook. Hank Aaron's 715th home run. By the way, I had mentioned that Vin Scully made that call. Vin Scully made that call, but my friend Jeff on Facebook also said, Danny, I believe it was Milo Hamilton who gets the credit for the Hank Aaron call. I'm sure there were several, but his is the one that's played most frequently and at the Hall of Fame. There you go. So thank you for that, Jeff, as well. And then we have Matthew who said Travis... Travis Ishikawa celebrating his pennant winning walk off in 2014. It is an even year, Alexa. <laughs> so we know what that means. We were wondering if the Giants can get back on track. And then my friend Walter said, Chris Coglin leaping over Yadier Molina, Air Cog. Airborne. I mean, yeah, it was incredible. And Yadi, the fact that he ducked to <laughs> he save ducked. his life. I guess was pretty amazing too. I love that photo. It's a great photo. Yeah. There's so many so many great iconic moments. And then we have one more. We have a we have a tweet. Oh, I'm sorry. We have Eric Sogard. We don't have a tweet. Well, we do have a tweet. It's Eric Sogard. It's a photo and a, it's a photo and a tweet. It's all yes. combined. It's all the same. Yeah. How cute is this? Getting his little daughter already for T-ball. Pretty incredible. Sadie is her name and she's wearing a princess dress. That's right. And uh, getting ready to crush a home run there. There's no other way to do it, right? You know what? Why why fit in when you can stand out wearing this adorable dress with her bat in hand, dad hanging by her side? I love it. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right, we got one more tweet. Now we have one more tweet. Yes, okay. For you, Lex. So uh, the rumor mill is flying high, right? You Darvish has been all over breaking news and, and scooping people. Wow. So we had a fan here who said, uh, hey, you Darvish, please take the Yankees offer. There's nothing like being a Yankee. Of course not. And you replies, they don't give me offer yet. Wow, that's a huge scoop. What is he doing? I love this. I can't. It's my favorite thing. That I he cannot is literally believe it. Legs out from under you. Every reporter that's been covering this story, you Darvish is coming through. Brian Hoke, man, you, you need to link up with you and get on this right now. It's unbelievable what he's doing. And maybe this is a new wave of things that are going to start happening. Maybe we see more of this now. You Darvish is five steps ahead of everyone. He's just building he for his next career as a reporter, I'm telling you. But where is you going? Well, we don't know that yet, but we know that in his uh, next career, he's going to be a fantastic reporter chasing down these scoops. Yeah, he is. He's doing it already. Right. So, all right. Thanks, Danny. Enjoy your weekend. Happy Friday. Thank you. Happy Friday. And thank you for watching us. Big, big thank you to Anthony Castrovince as well as Matt Caesar for joining us on today's show. If you missed any of it, make sure to check it out on Facebook. We will post uh, both full interviews there as well as all the fun interaction between Danny and I here today on 1225 Live. We had a really, really great week, and we hope you will be back next week as we continue on Monday. 1225 Live, same time, same place. We'll see you there. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. Happy Friday.